All right, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about polar coordinates. And all polar coordinates, um, you know, when they teach algebra, they give you x and y coordinates. And again, as you know, x just tells you how far you, you move left or right, and then the y tells you how far you move up or down. So sometimes uh, Cartesian coordinates, xy co coordinates, are called um, rectangular coordinates because you kind of move in a box-like um, shape. So polar coordinates are just another way to represent the same point in space. So suppose um, we go over x units and up y units. So generically, we're at some point that has um, the form xy. The idea is, instead of talking about moving left or right and up and down, we're going to talk about from the origin going to a certain angle Okay, so, and then a distance out to that point. So the angle I have to go, we call that theta. And the distance we have to go out, we call that r. So you can kind of think about that as being the radius. And notice we also get a little right triangle here. We've gone over x units, up y units. So from this little diagram, we get... Um, an equivalent form. And an equivalent way to describe this point when we go over x units and up y units, <clears throat> we basically label it as r comma theta. And r says that's the distance you go out, theta is the angle. Okay, so I'll try to make some more sense out of this. Just some basic formulas that you get from this diagram, however, are that x equals r times cosine of theta. This just comes from properties of right triangles. Think about Sokotoa. Y is r sine theta. And this is a way, if you're given r and theta, how to quickly convert it back into x and y coordinates. And then also we have that r squared is going to be x squared plus y squared. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. And then also the tangent of theta, again back to Sokotoa, is going to be um, the opposite over the adjacent. So just some basic relationships that are going to be important. All right, so let's just do a few basic examples here. Again, this is just kind of the very basics of polar coordinates in this video. So suppose we have these points and they're given in polar form and we want to graph them. So the the point 1 comma pi over 2. Again, my little hint here is to find the angle first. So here's your angle of 0. If you go up to pi over 2, okay, I'm sitting on the y axis. And then basically you just think, okay, I need to go out a distance of 1. We'll just arbitrarily choose that to be 1. This would be the point 1 comma pi over 2 in polar coordinates. You found an angle of pi over 2 and you've got a radius of 1. So let me see, I'm trying to keep them color coded here. Let's find um, negative 2 comma pi over 4. So again, pi over 4 is the angle, which is just a 45 degree angle. But notice the radius is negative. And this is why I say find the angle first. So here's the angle pi over 4. What you do is you basically kind of reflect it about the origin. So instead of being in the positive, well, instead of being in the first quadrant, the radius of negative 2, so here would be the point 2 comma pi over 4. Again, suppose this is a distance of 2. It doesn't quite look to be in perspective, but pretend it is. This would be the point positive 2 comma pi over 4. What you would actually have to do is reflect it, and that will give you the point negative 2 comma pi over 4. Okay, so the last one, I think I've, my, my orange pen is already in my A. Okay, so anyways, if we plot the point negative 1 comma negative pi over 2, again, the same thing. Now the angle negative pi over 2 is going to put you down kind of on the negative y-axis. Again, instead of going out a distance of positive 1, you reflect it and you go a distance of negative 1, which is actually going to put you at the same point. 
So an equivalent way of writing this point 1 comma pi over 2 is negative 1 comma negative pi over 2. And this basically just illustrates an important point. When you do things in x and y coordinates, points have unique representations. But when you do polar coordinates, there's in fact infinitely many ways to represent the same point. You can either just kind of, you know, basically you can play with the, the angle and the radius and come up with all kinds of different representations. So this is, uh, again, kind of just one little thing to keep in the back of your mind when you deal with polar coordinates. All right, so a couple more here. So in the first one, um, suppose we're given polar form and we're going to graph it and then we're going to convert it to x and y coordinates. So again, it says I find the angle 3 pi over 4. This is the angle 3 pi over 4. And then it says I go out a distance of 2 comma square root of 2. So arbitrarily, we'll pretend that's that distance. And it's easy to go from polar form to Cartesian form. You basically just use these first two cor these first two formulas because you know what r is and you know what theta is. It's just a matter of plugging them in. So x is going to be r, which is two square root of two, times cosine of the angle. So cosine, and our angle is three pi over four. If you simplify all this down, you'll get um, simply negative two. And then y is going to be 2 square root of 2 times sine of the angle, 3 pi over 4. And if you simplify this down, you simply get positive 2. So it says in polar form, this point is the point 2 square root of 2 comma 3 pi over 4. In x and y coordinates, we can describe it as the point negative 2 comma 2, which seems reasonable, negative 2 over and positive 2 up. Okay, so not so bad. Suppose in this next one, now we're given a Cartesian form, but we want to go to polar form. Okay, so this is just plain old xy coordinates. So negative 1 and then negative square root of 3. So that'll put me down here. And now we want the equivalent polar form for that point. Well, now to figure out. Um, to figure out r, we'll simply use this relationship that it's x squared plus y squared, and we'll take the square root. And tangent of theta is related by being y over x. So that seems uh, not so bad as well. So our radius is going to be the first coordinate squared, which is 1. And then we square negative square root of 3, which is going to be positive 3. That gives us a radius of square root of 4, or 2. So now already we know the r value. And tangent of theta, that's going to be negative square root of 3 over negative 1, which is simply going to give us square root of 3. And if you think about the angles, if you take the ratio of sine to cosine, um, you need to know your angles pretty well. I'm kind of leaving this part out a little bit. It turns out that the angle theta is going to simply be 4 pi over 3. So think about um, sine of 4 pi over 3 divided by cosine of uh, 4 pi over 3. You'll see that that equals square root of 3. So now we've got our equivalent polar form for it. It says that r is 2 and theta is 4 pi over 3. So that's an equivalent polar form. So before I run out of time, let me do a couple of graphs here real quick. And the first one it says we want r to be between negative 1 or excuse me, in between positive 1 and positive 2. Well, basically it says you go out a distance of 1 and it doesn't really matter where the angle is just so long as the radius is 1. So that's actually going to tra trace out a circle of radius 1. So here's r equals 1. Likewise, r equals 2 is just going to be a bigger circle. We, we're going to shade in all r values in between those two, which is going to give us the sort of little life preserver shape here. And likewise, suppose we want to do all angles between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, but we want the radius to be between negative 1 and 1. 
Again, I do the angle first. So here's angle positive pi over 4, angle 3 pi over 4. And notice this would give me, this little circular arc would give me the region if the radius was just between 0 and 1. But again, because it can be negative, it does this reflecting business as well when you think about plotting the points. So you're going to get this sort of hourglass shape when you plot this second region. So I hope these make some sense. I'm going over my time. Um, these are the basics. I'll do some harder questions as follow-ups.